Welcome back to part two of my behind the mix for physical level. So I put together the first video and it's a couple of days later now and I heard some things as I was editing that I want to make sure to attend to. So uh, this is a step I recommend for everybody when you're mixing. Uh, take a break, come back to it, uh, spread it out over a little bit of time if you can. Um, and make some notes. I'm not sure if you can see that. Well, there we go. Notes. So there were some vocal balance and some vocal problems that I wanted to fix. Um, I noticed that in the song there are some sections that uh, come and go and uh, uh, pretty big musical shifts and I want to be sure to highlight those more. The tom tuning issue that I alluded to in the last video and the 80s tom have not really been addressed in the drums. Um, so there's some work to do there still. I want to go through how to prepare for a final mix output and uh, uh, what all the steps are in uh, preparing for that stage. And uh, sort of as I get through all of the individual elements, listening to the song as an overall mix, um, it's important mixing a song to have a good understanding of the form of the song, knowing where the verses are, having a good sense of where it's supposed to go musically, and uh, uh, listening for all the little elements to bring forward that might otherwise get missed by the listener. And it's our job as mixing engineers to hear all of those things and decide to push them forward. Um, and there's various ways to do that, the uh, most obvious one being just give it a little automation volume boost and we'll do a lot of that. Um, also sometimes reverb level can come into play, EQ, um, but I don't know how deep we'll get on this one, it really depends on what the song needs. But I did notice those specific things, so uh, first of all, to go to the uh, uh, vocal tracks, let's take a look at those. All right, so you'll notice on screen I've shrunk everything down. It's 50-some tracks. I probably should have picked something a little smaller to go into, but, uh, you know, the work comes in the way it comes in, and that's what we're going to do. So uh, I shrunk everything down to a manageable size just to give myself an overview, uh, which I'm not going to do on screen, but I did take a listen to exactly where it left off, so I have an idea of what... Uh, I want to address first. And the first thing I want to look at is these vocal tracks. So I'm going to solo up the group and uh, that's I'm doing that right from the vocal VCA. If I solo that uh, we can hear just what's going on. Okay so uh, I do see a couple of levels. This one here being pretty loud this one here being kind of quiet, so I'm going to separate a few of these regions so I can take a look at them. I have also noticed there is clipping. You can see it on this waveform here. Those, anytime you see a waveform squared off at the edges like that, that's a danger sign. Um, clipping, if you don't hear it, it's not really a problem, but uh, mastering engineers hate seeing any of that. They want to be able to control any uh, volume limiting and we should try to give everything as dynamic and full range as possible without limiting any of the peaks in that sort of a hard way that we see right here. So uh, in a perfect world, it would have been tracked just a little bit lower, but there are ways to deal with it. And sonically, Let's get this back to a physical level, baby, one we know we can trust. I don't really hear any distortion on that. Maybe a very little bit on the last word trust. I heard a little, a little clipped tone. But what we're going to do is uh, just use a tool on this. There's a number of tools. Uh, I really like the Isotope RX. I bought just their most basic bundle because I don't do a lot of noise reduction. Post-production houses for video will do this a lot more. Um, or if you're really fixing problematic stuff. But the problems I deal with are so small that uh, the most basic bundle, which I want to say is like less than $100, uh, seems to work just fine. So D-clip uh, will round those edges back off. Normally I might use an audio suite version of this, but uh, at the moment you would not be able to hear that the way I'm recapturing these segments. So instead... 
we will come in here and uh, pull this in under the regular uh, inserts in Pro Tools. Now we're going to listen to just that region. Let me get this highlighted here. Yep, uh, there we go. I'm going to take, I'm going to focus in first on this section right here because I can see that it's clearly some clipping going on. And we're going to preview that. Let's get this back to a physical level, baby, one we know we can trust. Okay, so that found 2,000 or so clips. I think that's probably more than we need. Let's roll this back. Now you can see it's red on the input, and these are all defaulted as uh, 0 dB. It's saying it's got 0.3 dB of clipping right now. So in theory, if we put this at 0.5, that should uh, get rid of the maximum number of clips and leave everything else pretty well untouched. Um, so let's hear that one more time. Okay. Let's get this back to a physical level, baby. One we know we can trust. All right, so that should be fine. Let's see if we've got any other sections on this track. That really is it. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I don't need this plugin to run constantly. I don't need to worry about saving the original integrity of that section. So I'm going to highlight it. And now right click on that plugin, commit up to this insert. Uh, that's going to write that RX D clip onto that tra uh, track. Um, so edit selection is what we're going to commit, and I don't want to hide it and, ma and make the original track inactive. I'm going to do nothing with it. Oh, yeah, do nothing. And uh, you'll see how this goes. So then I click commit, and it's going to write that down. Shouldn't take very long. It's just a little section. And uh, here we go. Now I have a new track right underneath the double track which had the clipping on it and that waveform looks a lot more rounded there is still a little bit there that's pretty squared off but let's zoom way in on this and see yeah all of these waves here that are flattened out are no longer flat. They have rounded them all off. Now you will lose just the littlest bit of that, the, I guess the kind of hardness or smoothness of the original tone when you do this with a plug-in after the fact, but it's pretty minimal and you can see it even recreated a little bit of uh, uh, um, kind of transient information at the edges of this, which is kind of cool. It's sort of summarizing where the waveform is going before and after it looks like. I don't know exactly how it does it, but I know that it works. And this section now is going to sound nice and clean and smooth. So I'm going to take that and just drop it back onto that original track. And uh, now I can take this rendered track and wipe it right out of the session. Now we've got that clean and clear. So there are a couple of more tracks uh, that have the same sort of thing. These wide vocal parts here, I can see these are, that's like a big old sausage of tone. Um, uh, nothing wrong with recording hot. Certain recording systems want to be lower. My UA Apollo system, for the most part, uh, likes waveforms to be averaging around minus 18 to sort of be equivalent to a, uh, a 0 dB signal in an analog system, which is plus 4 dB uh, v um, is negative 18 on the digital system. That's actually not entirely true because some of the plugins are set up a little bit differently, but each plugin's manual is going to tell you where it wants to be for uh, audio levels. And it's uh, it's just sort of the way that it, it 
uh, wants to see the signal to give the proper response out of analog modeling. Now, certain times with analog gear, what we really liked is pushing it until it sounds hot. And uh, if you get a hotter digital signal, it's going to translate into that sort of a tone on a plug-in. So I'm not really hard and fast about, oh, you can't record any louder than plus 18. But I do like to see things not clipped. Clipped can be a problem, but we're not going to do this audio suite. We're going to do this uh, same thing. We're going to use this RX D clip. I'll get that on there. Just move it over. So let's preview this one and see where we're at. I'm not sorry for keeping you up all night If I'm good at keeping you satisfied Okay, so this time you can see we have 1 dB over peak according to what it's sensing. So I'm going to set that down a little lower. And uh, let me look at this other one as well. Um, it says plus 0.6, so go a little lower on that. I'm not going to hurt us to slightly overdo it on these tracks. They're doubled tracks. So, yeah, I guess we should listen through to the second section as well. It won't hurt him what he don't see Just thinking about you with your hands on me So let's get this back to a physical level, baby One we know we can trust and we can handle all right, so the second half, they were a little bit hotter. And you can see I'm just pulling that threshold down until I get lower than where it clipped out. Um, handy trick for those of you who are on Pro Tools, if you want to have two plugins show on screen at once, hold Shift and click on each of the plugins that you want to see, and they just keep on stacking up. You can get a whole screen full of them if you like. And uh, uh, there are always plugins that, uh, or tasks where I want to see these things multiple uh, multiple times. So we're going to commit that. And, uh, you know, I could go back to Tyler and Travis and tell them, oh, these are distorted vocals, you got to recut them. But frankly, one and a half, two dB of clip in a doubled vocal part in the middle of a 50-some track arrangement, it's just not worth it. They're, they've got the creation the way they want. And uh, a little bit of signal clipping doesn't need to stop a mix. It's, uh, it's part of, another part of the workflow for me as a mixer is just make this stuff work. Make it right. And uh, it's fine. And the listener will never have any idea that we did this. Uh, and they don't need to. Um, if Tyler wasn't watching this video, he'd never know that I did it because I would do this on a mix and uh, fix that little bit of a, a technical issue and it's gone. But uh, you just got to know to watch out for them. Anything that's clipped, if you're tracking yourself and you have time and you have energy and you have artistic motivation to want to do it, you could recut it. But uh, don't let it stop the flow. It's just not worth it. So let's see if these tracks are almost done. Yeah. Um, and uh, the balance is all in all. I thought we're actually pretty good listening to those vocals so far. Okay, let's zoom out here, and we'll take these rendered tracks, and now I should, for good measure, duplicate the original track uh, in case I decide I did too much or it doesn't sound right. So now I've got an alternate take for each of these, and I'm going to drop, oops, drop those tracks uh, up. Oh, that copied it, but that's fine. And we'll take these two tracks and get them out of the session because we don't need them. And we can now take those plugins off. So, like I said, I would probably do this under Audio Suite normally. Um, I just wanted to be able to, to capture those clips for the video. Um, my process is kind of crude here. I'm using QuickTime to capture the video and recapturing the audio on a, in a 
uh, mix down track within Pro Tools and resyncing it and I'm using the camera mic for my narration because frankly technologically without a whole video production suite I don't have the right stuff to uh, do it anymore complicated unless you know a way in which case let me know get in touch um, and uh, while I'm getting this next playback set up another thing I wanted to mention um, I'm curious if you watched the first video and you're now on to number two what did you hear in the mix from the first time that I didn't address you should leave it in the comments uh, of this video and see if I got to it as we're working on it here if not I'll have to go back and do a remix so uh, let's listen to a little more of this vocal balance I thought it was pretty good I am gonna bring this one down a little bit let's listen to this section and see where we're at I know you're used to acting so special just me you and these feelings to settle so let's get this back to a physical level baby one we know we can trust and we can have Okay, so I did hear some of those harmony tracks that weren't really coming through. So we're going to go in and uh, check those out a little bit more. I'm going to let this run on a little further, too. I know you're used to acting so special. Just me, you, and these feelings to settle so. Let's get this back to a physical level, baby. One we know we can trust and we can handle. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to do something about those ooh tracks as well. I'm going to do that off camera uh, just because you don't need to see me do the same process over and over again. Uh, we got a couple more tracks that need some declipping down there. Not a big deal. Let's see what our balance is like in this section. And again, the technique, Every time boost and you cut start until talking you find about the right spot. New guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Well, babe, I've learned a few things I think you'd appreciate. Don't let this history just go to waste. Oh, please, baby. I know you're used to acting so special. Just me, you, and these feelings to settle so. Let's get this back to a physical level, baby. One we know we can trust and we can handle. You say you're thinking over, but then you never leave. It's 4 a.m. and now you're asking for apologies. I'm not sorry for keeping you up all night. If I'm good at keeping you satisfied. Soft. Okay, so pretty good balance all in all. I did hear a big P right in the middle of that last phrase. And uh, let's take a look for that. I like to listen to these things one at a time, not because this is how I'm going to make the final decision, but it will reveal any flaws that might potentially blow by in the course of an overall mix. Um, so I can see, just from doing this enough times, that this right here is my P. Um, so these big, broad waves, that's low frequency information, and uh, that is what a P-plosive looks like on a waveform. Yep, there it was, apology. So there's a bunch of ways to deal with it. Uh, the easy one, which I'm going to do this time because it, just an easy one should work, is to take an EQ, and on Audio Suite, uh, you don't even need to hear this, you can just see it. And uh, um, if you have an EQ that has a spectral analyzer on it, it's very easy. You can also do this with just a basic high pass. Oh, where's the one I'm looking for? There we go. You can do this with a basic high pass filter listening to it. And you just play back the section, which you're very lucky you can't hear right now because that's very obnoxious sounding. But you can just dial out all of that low frequency information and... Uh, uh, since it's an audio suite, it, I just click render, writes it right down, and you can see that plosive is just about gone. Maybe not entirely, but uh, close enough. Yeah, you can see a big lobe here. That's the plosive. The rest of this is okay, so we're going to take that out. And uh, likewise on through each of these tracks. 
just check it out. Yep, there it is. I got up above it. And uh, yep, not so much plosive on that, but we'll take out what's there anyway. And, you know, instead of having to, like, automate an EQ or anything like that, I, I'm doing a mix session. I'm just going to write it in. There's no way I'm going to want that back for that brief moment. And uh, in order to get all those fades at once, you can highlight the whole section across multiple tracks. Apple F for your fade dialog. 30 milliseconds should be enough to hide that. Yes, adjust those. Whoa, that's a big gap. Let's reduce those down to like 10 milliseconds. Should be good. I might even go less than that. Let's go five. And. Boy, I'm and now you're asking for apologies. I'm not sorry for keeping you. Yeah, that'll work just fine. So uh, there we go, and I'm going to take a quick pause off camera, finish the rest of the declipping of these audio tracks, and then we'll do some listening in context and get these all set up. All right, so I've got all my vocals rendered down, uh, declipped everything, and uh, I did reconsolidate all the tracks. Oops, hey, get back here. Uh, so you'll see that these are once again solid single uh, files the whole way. Consolidating is a good way to make sure with a high track count that you don't have a crash. Um, when the computer has to start loading a brand new audio file, it jumps the hard drive access up. If you watch the system meter and if it's consolidated, it's not going to have that spike. So we shouldn't have a problem. Um, the other thing is if there's something that doesn't come in for a long time and I'm having troubles crashing, I might delete whole gaps of blank tracks like that. But I don't think we're going to have a problem. I just did a, a mix for a different album that was 69 channels of audio. So this one being in the 50 range shouldn't be a problem. Uh, my system can handle it, but uh, that is a good way to get around it if you're having any sort of system hiccups, at least in Pro Tools. So uh, I think we're doing pretty well on the vocals. I want to listen now in context and see what we've got going. All right, so I'm just going to give a playthrough all the way from the top. I've got my vocal uh, scene pulled up here, so 16 channels of vocals. Uh, I'm just going to be pushing some up until they're too loud, pulling them back down, and make sure we've got all the parts. But I haven't had trouble hearing any of the harmonies so far. Hear me out, darling. I've been hearing you spin on your phone, and I don't like it. But it's nothing that I control All the stress and started getting old Now I'm getting good at drawing lines Between me, your spare time And working on things should change But now I need a little more This tension that I've been getting And this feeling I've been going insane Oh, baby, please I know Thinking over, but then you never leave. It's 4 a.m. and now you're. 
hoping you're satisfied Soft talk, sweet sentimental Just me, you, it's feelings to sell So let's get this back to a physical level, baby One we know we can trust and we can handle It won't hurt him, but he don't see Okay, so the only thing I noticed on that playthrough really was that the oohs and ahs were a little bit too present. And I don't think it's all volume. I think they just need to sound further away but still have the volume. And uh, that's a good spot where reverb comes in. So I want to have uh, those oohs and ahs in there. I, wanna, I want people to notice them, but not as a forefront feature, more as a... a part of the, the band, part of what's going on around it. So I cranked it up on my mixer after it was done playing. You didn't hear it on that last playback at all. But uh, now you should. One we know we can trust and we can handle. Maybe not spacey enough yet. Been you satisfied. Soft talk, sweet sentimental. Just me. Okay, so I like it, but uh, this is where the delay is going to come in. Uh, these three, oops, not all of those, these three tracks here definitely could use this delay going on. Uh, so I don't know what we have going on for delay. I know that I set one up or moved one or something. Oh, yeah, this is another problem that I should have made a note about. This reverb send right here is a mono track. It's a mono reverb. And uh, in the sake of tracking session, that's fine, but we're going to get rid of that. Um, it looks like all of these real verbs have just come up at a basic uh, default setting. Um, I don't know if he had a, a, a preset that I'm not getting or if he's just pulling it up as it sets to be some reverb to use, but we're going to get rid of this altogether. Just wipe that track right out. But we we're just doing delay. We've got a dynamic delay here. Dynamic delay is kind of cool because it comes up louder when it's not being fed input. So the tails come up. Um, but in this case, I don't think we want that. I think we want a real full uh, delay that's just going to be on and sort of spread those things out. So I really like the Waves H delay. Um, for most tasks, it's my go-to. It has a lo-fi mode. It has four different analog responses. Um, it's got this high and low pass filter built in, which all just works great. I do want this to be fairly bright. So I'm not going to low pass it too severely. 11K or so just to take some of the crack a lot of the top end. And uh, so I don't know if we have BPM set up properly for this. Let's take a look here. We are on beats. And... Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, of course, this was cut to a grid, so that's all good. Boom, 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 boom. So dotted eighth note is what we want, I think, what I'm looking for. It's on dotted eighth note, that's good. We've got a fair amount of feedback. I'll pull that just a little lower. And that is turned off, set to the proper output. We've got another filter there that I'm gonna also take off because I just filtered it. So let's solo up those tracks and see what's going on. Okay, now before I actually roll this, I'm gonna have this set up to adjust my delay, so I don't have to do it double. So we're gonna flip the channel on my controller, move this over auxes, and make sure that it's on delay. Let's give that a good bit of level to start with and see where we are.
yeah, that's good. So I didn't really notice it as it was singing, but there were some hard edges to it, like on that transition, where it seemed a little detached from the track. Let's listen to that now in the track and see how that works out for us. Keeping you satisfied, soft talk, sweet sentimental, just me. Okay, so now there is some volume going on here too. So we're going to need a group to do this. Oops. Take just these oohs and create a group for those. I did not hear the problem on the earlier tracks uh, just at this point. So we're going to take all three of those. I'm going to change this to touch. Now you can do this with a mouse uh, by grabbing any one of the individual faders, but in this case I have the control surface. So make it real easy. If I'm good at keeping you satisfied, soft talk, sweet sentimental, just me, you, and some feelings to sell, so let's get Did not like that. So it ended up at an okay volume, but through the transition it was not great. Try that again. Boy, for those of you working on a computer, who've never worked on an analog system back in the old days, you'd have to have these things planned out, rehearsed. You might have two or three people's hands on the boards. Automation is such a beautiful thing. If I'm good at keeping you satisfied Soft talk, sweet sentimental Just me, you, and some feelings to sell So let's get this there we go, and you can see on screen the automation that I just wrote in. Just waited until it hit that change, and then I pulled it down. I didn't want to lose it, but I did, I did want it tucked back a little bit. So uh, that's great. Let's see. I didn't hear a whole lot else to deal with. Maybe these vocals here at the end should get a little more verb. Uh, I don't think they need delay, but... Uh, so there's a bunch of ways to do this. Actually, I can just turn it up because it's a single, single track. Um, yeah, so flip this back to the vocal verb and that background vocal one. Yeah, that verb is not super, uh, super hot. No, that's up there a good ways. This is going to push all of these ad libs at the end in. Not by making them quieter, although I might do that too, but definitely pushing them back. So let's see here. And it won't hurt what he don't see. Don't see. Just don't see. Don't see. Just don't see. So just those last two seem like they could use bringing down some. So I am going to do a little automation on that last one. The tail end of that gets totally lost, and we don't want that. Nothing should be totally lost. No musician creates a part by mistake. So every note should be in there. It doesn't need to be super prominent every time, but it needs to be in. So, not a bad bit of automation, but I did get a little hot there in the, the tail end. And you can see where I sort of pushed the level up even hotter. Uh, yeah. So, I'm just going to take that part and delete it out, and that should be fine. So, it keeps coming up 
as it uh, tails off, and I thought the, the ending volume it got to was right, was where it should be. So uh, that's pretty good. Now, in my notes, so vocals, we're going to highlight some sections here in a minute, um, and we're going to start thinking about sections and making each of these things pop as their own thing, uh, and then we'll get around to finaling, finalizing this mix. Um, but before we get there, I noticed in the drums, the tom, the floor tom had been tuned down, and uh, I heard a little bit of graininess to it, which uh, I want to be sure to get rid of. So here's a nice section at the end, we'll listen to this, and uh, I'm going to swap this out. First of all, let me give you just a little sample of what the problem was. Here's a section. I'm going to solo this tom up. There's just this little bit. Oh, I got to get back to a blank here. Yep. Just a little bit of graininess at the very top of that uh, uh, that hit, the, the transient. And the note is fine. Doom, doom. I, keep, I keep a piano here just for this. So it's an F. Um, and it's dropped down three semitones, so F sharp, G, A flat. It went from A flat to F. So there's a plugin that I really love for tuning drums called Torque. It's another Waves resynthesis, same family as the de that I use. And it knows the frequency. It found it. It's an A sharp. It's already there. And uh, we can just grab this dial and pull it down. Oh, yep. Well, actually, let's reset that. And, um, yeah, I don't use this every day. So one cent is one semitone, so three and a half is going to go down to there. And let's see where we're at here. Hmm. great. So that little bit of a, a fuzzy attack, which I find with that pitch to uh, built in pitch shifter in Pro Tools, uh, this doesn't do. It's organic resynthesis. Whatever you're doing waves with that one, you got it right. So we've got that on there. I'm not going to render it down. I'll leave it. I can always retune it later. But uh, I think that takes care of any of the little nitpicky things I do see. Oh, I just boosted that way the heck up. We have a little bit of overload on a few of these tracks. Ah, yes, this is a problem as well when it comes to routing. Uh, 15 is my bass, 16 is my vocal, and they're combined onto one limiter, which is not a great way to do this. So we're just going to split that into mono, and we're going to get rid of you. And we'll just call that 15, and we'll call you 16. You know, uh, it's the problem of pulling these things in from one session instead of a master template is that they're not always the same way. I probably didn't use those individual outputs on the mix that I pulled it in from. Don't know why. Doesn't matter. It's fixed now. Minus one, minus one. And I have to assign the outputs that these masters are going to and that the limiters apply to. And there we go. A 
5 and 6 had a limiter kicking on. Now one thing I have found is uh, if you have a group, uh, drums for example, if this was a drum set mic'd and I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all as drum tracks and I didn't have limiters on all of them and only on one pair, uh, it would cause all sorts of phase problems due to the latency of having a plug-in on a master. So um, it's a small amount of latency, but it's enough to mess with waveforms. So you need to keep mic'd groups together. Uh, it's something I can talk about more in another video another time. But um, we're getting pretty close to the overall balance. I want to see how those vocals are going to weigh in against everything else. I might do some VCA automation uh, or VCA leveling. And then we're going to start automating the mix. Okay, so I got my VCAs back, individual tracks. Let's give a listen through. And uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of balancing. I may not end up having to do any. And then we're going to talk about these sections and see uh, what can get pushed forward and highlighted. Hear me out, darling. A little more drums. I've been hearing on your phone and I don't like it But it's nothing that I control All the stress and started getting old Now I'm getting good at drawing lines Doing me your spare time And working on things should change but Now I need a little more This tension that I've been getting And this feeling I've been going insane Just me, you, and these feelings that settle So let's get this back to a physical level, baby One we know we can trust and we can handle Okay, before we go all the, all the rest of the way through, I just noticed that solo is really dry, and that is the reverb that I killed. So we need to take all of these instruments that we're all feeding that mono reverb and reassign those over. Now, currently I only have the capital chamber going, which I really like, and I think it may be fine. But, uh, we could not like it after I give a playthrough here. So, I don't put reverb sends on my parallels very often. Sometimes I do, but uh, typically all it's doing is adding unnecessary latency and, and uh, delay compensation needs for the system. And, you know, I want as little of that as I can get. Okay, so now all the reverbs are the Vox reverb. Let's just rename that since we only have one reverb. And likewise with delay, we only have delay and we only have a reverb. Um, except for the vocal reverb, or the drum reverb, and that's fine to keep that as a separate thing. So now, this section here, uh, I just noticed there was a ton of reverb on that solo and it felt dry and then all of a sudden it was gone. So I think we're going to have a fair amount of uh, uh, reverb levels to adjust. Let's see here where I'm at on my fader surface. Electric guitars. Uh, electric guitars. There's the sense. Okay. Okay. Synth bass parts, arpeggio, vibes, synth solo steel. Yeah. There should have been tons of verb on those things. So let's get this queued up here. Solo, ooze, vibes. Let's start here at the vibe section. Oh, I'm 
I'm getting good at drawing lines Between me, your spare time And working on things should change I like the verb on Now I need a little more of this tension that I've been getting in this feeling I've been going insane Oh, baby, please I know you're used to acting so special Just me Every it's got that Winwood kind of vibe. Start talking um, about the new steel, guy gets me bored now. And just tuning out. Babe, I've learned a few yeah, things. I think you appreciate all oh, that this history just go to waste. Oh, please, baby. I know you used to act so special. Just me, you, and these feelings to settle. So let's get this back. see we had some automation going on that steel that I didn't notice before under pans. Yep. Uh, looks to me like Tyler drew that in when he was tracking. I thought it was cool. Uh, I'm going to leave it just like it sits. Uh, no reason to mess with it. I just wanted to see what was going on and make sure it wasn't something like an import error or uh, some other problem. But that's pretty good. So all in all the blend I think is just about where we want it. Um, I will very often get revisions sent when I send a mix out. Uh, comments about, oh, hey, you missed this, or this part needs to come up. And Tyler's great. He'll give me a dB, uh, one or two dB, or half a dB of this section, or or it should be just above inaudible, or this needs to be really prominent. I'll get great notes back. So uh, I'm not worried about be it being absolutely 100% unquestionable because, well, his taste and my taste are not always going to be the same. And it's his decision to make. He's producing. I'm just the mix engineer. And uh, I serve the song. I serve the producer. So, um, yeah, section. So the beginning, we get drums and bass going on. And then the arpeggio kicks in. Um, let's just look a little closer here and sort of think about a plan. So we've got the roads going right away. We've got this backwards guitar. Oh, I don't know if I noticed what that is. Let's listen to this part real quick and see. Okay, I'm still flipped here in my controller. Backwards guitar is really quiet. Um, Hear me out, darling. So I like the part. Uh, glad that I checked it out to see what was going on because it was not coming through. Um, so let's see here. I'm also going to put a little bit of that uh, auto pan on that track as well. Where, oh where did you go, Mr. Auto Pan? There it is. Um, Oh, yeah, not that fast. We'll slow it way down. 
and I'm going to make it narrower. Um, I just want it to have a little bit of a move. It's a background sound, and this is going to help pull our attention to it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, let's start with that, and I got some delay on it, and I got uh, some verb on it. Okay, so I like where the backwards guitar is setting, and all of a sudden I started pushing the acoustic forward, and I noticed, chunk, there is a big strum, a big high frequency strum coming through right there. So this acoustic does need a little more compression, and I don't have any on it right now. It's just a Pultec, and the Pultec is adding some high end and doing some sculpting on the low end, and that's really fine, but we definitely want to keep that from poking through too much. So um, let me just check this out real quick. Well, let's see what kind of compressor to use. Uh, an 1176 would do it. I don't know that this needs something so deluxe. It's a pretty backgroundy part and uh, it's not needing to be highlighted. It just needs to be held in. So I think this might be a job for the good old uh, oh, I'm looking on EQs. No wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. The Renaissance compressor this is a classic Waves. I think it was one of the very first plugins I ever used. Uh, and uh, it works great. Um, so we'll go fairly hard on the ratio, fairly fast on the attack. We're going to go with an Electro model because, again, it's faster and smoother. Auto release control is fine, warm is fine. Uh, don't need a whole lot of gain makeup. I just want to have it lock down what gets over. And let's see what that is. We'll leave this up and give her a listen. So special. Just me, you, and these feelings to settle. So let's get this back to physical level, baby. One we know we can trust. Yeah, I'm still hearing that jump through, although the whole thing is settling in better. So I'm going to take that one and uh, separate it out and clip gain it down. Um, I've seen some engineers say on some of the forums that you should never use clip gain, but you know, when there's something like that, of course you should use clip gain. Just put it back where it should be. But then you never leave, it's for him and now you're asking for So that acoustic is still in there subtly, but it's in there now, and you can hear that little shink to shink of the pick on the strings. Um, so clip gain versus changing your plug-in or changing a fader. Clip gain affects things right at the very beginning. If you want your compressor to be uh, hitting sort of the same amount throughout the whole track, this compressor setting I had, it was just shading the, a touch off the front end, which is really all the more that I need. But... Uh, the second section came in and it just wasn't driving that compressor. If I want that signal to drive into the compressor so that the compressor is reacting the same way throughout the tune, uh, sort of to set the tonality of the, that thing as opposed to just like limiting peaks, then uh, you need to have the clip gain set so that it's going to drive into it the same amount the whole way, unless you want a special effect of having something really f jump out. Uh, and that's not what I'm looking for in this acoustic. 
I just want it to sort of set there, uh, giving a little bit of sizzle on top. And uh, yeah, so clip gain is needed. Take down the, the really hard peaks and then bring up that quieter level at the end. And it should be fine. Let's just double check this clip here. Babe, I've learned a few things I think you appreciate Oh, that this history just go to waste It's fine. It doesn't sound out of place with that compressor on there, which I just wanted to be sure of. So, uh, yeah. A little distraction on another problem. And again, I'm going to consolidate that to make sure that I don't have any playback troubles. Um, so, we were planning parts. So we've got this backwards guitar and the bass and drums and the vocals going at the beginning. We have a little vocal double that comes in, synth bass comes in, well bass and drums, that's it, they come in pretty quickly. And then the arpeggio comes in a little bit after that. We've got a couple of guitar harmonies. These guitar harmonies might need to be brought up. So I'm going to create a group for those. And I'm going to call it Guitar Harmony Start, so I know what's what with my groups. That may need to come up. I've got that group enabled. Let's just check that out. Hear me out, darling. I've been hearing you speak on your phone, and I don't like it. But it's, it's nothing that I control. All the stress and started getting old. Now I'm getting Okay, so some of these things I can plan out, some of it I have to hear it and decide what's what. So here's what I'm hearing is that the hi-hat enters here, and then this next second half of this first verse, it's sort of building towards the chorus, but it does it sort of in two steps. So it's like there's the, the third quarter and the fourth quarter, and uh, uh, this is a place where VCAs can come in handy. Um, I'm going to set up touch automation on all of my VCA groups and yep, I got the vocals in there and I'm going to put it on the lead vocal itself. I heard one spot at the end of that where the lead vocal didn't come through and uh, we're going to push that forward when we get there and uh, in addition to that uh, that second half of the verse when the hi-hat comes in I'm going to let it build a little bit for the, through the first half and then drop it back and then let it build again up into the chorus and then when it gets to the chorus I'm going to push everything forward a little bit for the chorus. So uh, I can do that right on my VCAs and, uh, and just sort of gently push the whole thing as a group. Um, you could do this by creating a VCA group if you're doing it with your mouse and do a single mouse click for the whole VCA group. But this is where having a fader controller really comes in handy. But it's nothing that I control All the stress and started getting old Now I'm getting good at drawing lines Between me and spare time And working on things should change but now I need a little more This tension that I've been getting And this feeling I've been going insane Oh, baby, please I know Okay so that's a little bit of a push. It's subtle, but there's just a little more of a dynamic in there. Bands do this all the time, but when things are built a piece at a time, it can be very hard to get. So you can see, if I zoom way in on this, I didn't do a lot, but uh, just enough to give it a little bit of a push, and then a second little push, and that vocal line I didn't catch, so I'm going to do that really quick. I've been getting in this feeling, I've been going insane. to do that again. Pretty close. Uh, actually, you know what? Instead of just running it again, let me just go in and draw in what I wanted. Do, 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 do. So yeah, this section here got boosted too much too soon. And you can see the waveform is louder. I did not see it because it was so 
uh, small on screen. So we're just going to pull that down a little bit. This word, I'm not sure what it is, but boy, it is quiet. Oops. All right, so let's see how that sounds. Say, oh, baby, please. Even more, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of this on clip gain. Baby really got swallowed up there. Uh, and we'll pull the beginning of please down a little bit. Let's hear that one more time. Say, oh, baby, please. I know you used to act so special. Okay, now the chorus. Uh, a lot of times in a pop song, you want the chorus to push a little harder. So, um, Drums, I'm going to leave the bass alone. Drums, keys, electric guitars, those three I'm going to push forward a little bit. So we're still set up for automation, and I'm just going to do this grabbing it right there. Okay, so uh, I felt like the drums dropped too much at the solo when I released that boost. So we went from uh, a 0.9 boost back to minus 3. That's a pretty significant change. And then I boosted it during the solo back up to 1.3, negative 1.3. So I'm just going to move this to negative 1.3 or thereabouts and uh, delete all this other stuff in the middle. And now where I set it is where it's going to end up for that whole thing. It does drop down. The second verse, there's a big change though. We've got uh, the road still continuing. Uh, we've got a little bit of electric. Oh, what is going on here? It really breaks down big time. And I just want to make sure I know what's coming in to be prepared for it. So, oh, we've got ooze. We've got a break all together. Drums come back in a little bit with a few bass notes. Rhodes, guitars, uh, harmony vocals. Yeah, I think I'm just going to need to listen to this and see what's what. Let me shrink these back down where I can see around the screen a little more. When you get this many tracks, it's a lot just to be able to see it all on screen and keep track of what's happening where. Anyway, let's listen to that section. Every time you start talking about the new guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Babe, I've learned a Okay, so this section is a great example, uh, really nicely produced to have this breakdown, um, give some space in the middle. So the Rhodes is going to have to come up. That is the uh, sort of the linchpin of this section to me. And uh, let's see here, we'll get the automation set on that. So I'm going to start by boosting the Rhodes. I'm also going to bring up the lead vocal a little bit, which is already set for automation. Since everything is dropping down, I don't want the entire energy to drop out, so instead we'll just sort of focus it back on uh, where we want people's attention to be, which is this stripped down vocal and keyboard thing, and then we're going to have these hits, boom, boom, or however that went, and I'm going to push those forward a little bit too so they come in as a bit of a shock, and then drop it all back to the rest of the verse. So first we're going to push the roads and the vocals forward, and then we'll build the rest around that. Every time you start talking about the new guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Well, babe, I've learned to... Okay, so same thing on the roads as the drums. I didn't get it to the right level at first, but I did by the end. So we are at negative 0.6. I'm just going to bring this beginning one up, actually even a little hotter than that. Um, and then uh, take out what happened in the middle. Vocals I thought were a good level. They might have even been a little too hot right there in that last playthrough. Let's see. Eh, they don't look like they get real hot. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to go back a little further and listen. <laughs> Start talking about the 
talking about the new guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Babe, I've learned. Okay, yeah, so I think the vocal's really fine. If anything, maybe a little quiet. But um, I'm not going to mess with it yet. Um, we'll listen through a couple of more times and decide. But that bass and drum, those hits need to come up. So I'm just going to do that right on the VCAs. <laughs> Start talking about the new guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Babe, I've learned a few things. I think you appreciate. Great, love it. Uh, so, yep. Then the backwards guitar comes in. There's these little guitar parts, the harmonies. Yeah, I think we're. I think that's going okay. Let's hear how this next verse sounds. I'm going to take it back again to that spot, though, and listen to the lead vocal a little more right there. Every time you start talking about the new guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Babe, I've learned a few things I think you appreciate. Oh, that this Okay, so the thing I heard on that vocal is the next verse, it moves around quite a bit. Uh, this could use some more compression on this lead vocal. I just, in general, feel like it's fighting to stay out front quite as much as I think it should. So this is where LA-2A really comes in handy. Classic compressor. I would love a piece of the hardware, but that's a good chunk of savings for me to buy a piece of hardware like this. Um, limit mode is going to do more control, and on a thick pop tune like this, I think it's needed. Comp is just more subtle. Uh, seems like a lot of the engineers that I really respect love that limit mode on the LA-2A. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to pull this up on that same section and see if I can get this vocal setting somewhere more like what I want it to be. Let's see, second verse, that's where the dropout happens, yep. And that's the chorus, okay. Every time you start talking about the new guy gets me bored and I end up tuning out. Well, babe, I've learned a few things I think you appreciate. Don't let this history just go to waste. Oh, please, baby. I know you used to act so special. Just me, you, and these feelings to settle. So let's get this back to a physical level, baby. One we know we can trust. And we can end up, you say you're thinking over. But then you never leave. It's for him and I. You're asking for apologies. I'm not sorry for keeping you up all night If I'm good at keeping you satisfied Soft talk, sweet sentimental yeah. That's much better. That vocal's really setting out in front of everything and the LA-2A just holds it in. You know, the original ad for these things is great. It talks about uh, limiting and compression with absolutely no distortion. And... Uh, it does stay pretty true to form, but it adds something really nice and sweet and rich. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful vocal compressor. Um, okay, so let me consolidate that. Um, that right there, keeping that vocal on front, is really going to help a lot. So we got the second verse. Uh, I think we're going to want a little push forward on that chorus again, and I'm going to do that just with everything, except I'm not going to do the vocal boost, just all the stuff behind it, and uh, give everything a little bit of like a maybe 1 dB boost on that second chorus, and then I'm going to do the same thing again on the, the outro uh, chorus. Um, what are these parts labeled here? We have got... 
Chorus 2, Bridge and Breakdown. Yeah, that's going to need a little bit of attention, but I'm going to first just do these boosts in the chorus and uh, see where that gets us. Sorry, keeping you up all night If I'm good at keeping you satisfied Soft talk, sweet sentimental Just me, you, and some feelings to sell So let's get this back I think we're we're getting pretty close here in this bridge section. I think the the drums need to stay pushed forward a little bit. The keyboards and the guitars not so much. And then the Rhodes is going to have to come up again on the breakdown. That's the main things I heard. We're going to listen to that again and just see what's what. So through the bridge and the breakdown, focusing on keeping the drums up and then the Rhodes. Keeping you up all night If I'm good at keeping you satisfied Soft talk, sweet sentimental Just me, you, and some feelings to sell So let's get this back Okay, so here's where our toms come in The 80s toms, I think, can be pushed up quite a bit more uh, Let's see, here we got high tom, low tom and the 80s time I'm just gonna crank that up a good chunk and then the bass is also gonna need to come up to match that okay so let's see we got the keys pushed forward let's see where my bass and yeah, we'll take that right there and the time I just cranked up Satisfied, soft talk, sweet sentimental just me you and some feelings to sell so let's get this Okay, pretty decent. Um, let's take a look on the, oops, don't move it, just expand it. It was better at the end than the beginning for level. And again, here's our level, oops, up to four, four. So we'll take this up to somewhere in that vicinity, oops. And delete this stuff in the middle. And let's see what we got. can definitely use a little more push out of the band when it comes back in. Uh, it felt to me like the energy drops now and I want the energy to go forward. So uh, I'm just going to grab all those VCAs except the bass which is going to come back down and I'm going to push the drums forward. I'm going to push the guitars and keys all forward a little bit. Just me, you, feelings to sell, so let's get this back to a physical level. getting pretty close. So at this point, I've worked through each of the sections and it all seems to make sense. Um, this is a good point to get new perspective. And uh, uh, for my method on that, I guess, uh, I'm going to get up and walk around a little bit and uh, uh, take a listen all the way through on the speakers. I've been on headphones this whole time for the sake of making the video. And I want to hear in the room what's happening. And uh, I might make some notes, um, I'll take my notepad with me and uh, kind of just meander around a little bit, maybe sit in my chair, sit on the back couch, uh, um, might change speakers in the middle, you know, whatever. I just want to hear it with a, something other than that laser focus that I'm using the rest of the time. And uh, we'll see how it's feeling. Hear me out, darling. I've been hearing you spin on your phone and I don't like it But it 
nothing that I control All the stress and started getting old Now I'm getting good at drawing lines Between me, your spare time and working on things should change But now I need a little more This tension that I've been getting And this feeling I've been going insane Oh, baby, please I would say a 95% completed mix at this point. I think there's going to be a few more tweaks. And uh, uh, at this point, it's pretty close. Uh, the bass level, once I pushed that synth bass forward, felt good in the room. That's one of those things to me that headphones don't really tell you properly. Um, and uh, yeah. So I pushed that forward and it all felt better. The vocals seemed too loud in the room. Again, one of those things that headphones are not always great at uh, revealing. So I think at this point it's about time to print the mix and send it to Tyler. Now there is a screen that I've got going that you have not been seeing. I use dual monitors and I've been capturing a single one to put on the YouTube video. So I'm going to switch things over and show you my other... Uh, screen. We'll capture that for a minute and uh, I'll talk about my master bus processing. Be right back. Okay, so there's a point uh, for any mix that uh, you're ready to output your final uh, your final file, your final session, your the final mix is ready to go. And uh, if you're Working entirely in the box, very often you'll have a single master which will have any number of processors on it or none at all. Um, there's a lot of debate about master bus processing, whether or not it's appropriate for mix engineers to use it, but here's the thing. Mixing consoles all the way back to the 1970s had compressors on their master output. Uh, Neve, early Neve consoles had the 2254 modules, which a pair of those now is 
$15,000 for a pair of those. They were built into the console and uh, very often strapped to the stereo master outputs. And the entire mix is crafted through a bus compressor, which sort of glues things together and works with the dynamics. If I push something forward with the faders or the VCAs, it hits that master compressor and that compressor may pull it back, which gives sort of the, the impact of, and energy of a mix getting louder and a band just pushing and, and playing uh, into that section of the song. And that's really sort of what the master bus compressor does. It's a key part if you're using one of getting the whole sound. So my system, I've got a summing amplifier, which takes all the signals, combines it with electrons on copper wire, and sends it out through a set of stereo outputs so it's mixed analog electronically even though it's a digital system and uh, not long in the past I used to put compressors and channel strips and EQs between my interface and the summing amplifier now I'm mostly doing uh, setting those things up like I did earlier with the vocal track re-recording recapturing and then sending out without those extra processes um, there's tonal arguments each way. I've done some shootouts, and uh, uh, the, there are differences, but they're pretty minimal when you get down to listening to the final output mix. But the mix bus compression is something pretty key, and that's what I have over here on this second screen. This has been up the whole time. API 2500, these are sort of my normal settings. Occasionally, I will change them, and uh, go with this loud, new setting, hard, loud, and new for the tones. And uh, in this compressor, it changes the tone pretty dramatically. But the, the threshold, the attack, the ratio, all of those things interact with that, that tone bank, and I'm not changing it at this point of a mix. I've been this far into it, and I know that those are the settings that are going to work uh, because the whole mix was crafted with it. Um, and uh, I do want to double check how much I'm driving it. Sometimes it does work a little better to hit it a little harder or to back off it a little bit. And I can do that either with my output knob on the summing amplifier or I can just do it with the threshold and output uh, gain of the compressor itself. Um, and that's what I'm going to do is do any of those changes in software. I also, on my input, this thing that's labeled VP28 and... If you've not used one of these uh, Universal Audio Apollo systems, this program here is uh, called Console, and it controls all the signal coming into the audio interface. So each time I've played something here in the mix, I'm recording it, and it's getting sent back in through the outputs of the summing amp, through my patch bay, into these VP28 labeled inputs on my Apollo unit and getting recorded back into Pro Tools so that I can import it and sync it with the video and make this whole thing go. But now it's the same step for the final output. Um, when I'm sending out approval mixes, test mixes, I'm generally not hitting the tape machine. I will hit the tape machine with this project and uh, that might be another short video in and of itself to discuss what the tape machine adds to this whole equation. Um, but I'm not going to get into that one today. However, we hit this uh, bus compressor and also uh, an Oxford limiter, and there's a little bit of this enhanced curve, which sort of adds some density to the mix. Um, and other than that, it's just a limiter that's set up to make sure I don't overload on the input stage, which I virtually never do. I'm not running that hot. Um, but I am driving into this API 2500 and uh, just taking off a dB or two, just enough to add a little bit of glue and, and punch to it. So I'm going to play this mix down now and show you with and without it. I'll be switching it here as we go and uh, uh, you'll hear what the difference is that it makes. And I'm going to get it set the way that I think it should be. And, uh, and then I'm going to send this mix off to Tyler and Travis to give me their thoughts and comments and revisions on and then ultimately I'll end up doing a few more tweaks to suit what they want and this will be released before very long. This is brand new unreleased material used with the permission of Travis and Tyler of course. Thank you guys for letting me dive into this and expose all the little parts here for anybody that wants to see it and uh, 
Uh, anyway, here's the master bus chain and what's going on with that. Hear me out, darling. Not hitting at all at the beginning. I've been hearing you spit on your phone and I don't like it. But it's nothing that I control. That all the stress and started getting old. Just turned off. Now I'm getting good at drawing lines between me. You spare time and working on things. All right, here we go. That's pretty solid. Uh, you heard a little bit of difference there, and it's subtle, but with the compressor, it's got a little more punch and a little more smack. Um, I did actually raise the threshold at the end. I felt like as I pushed that final verse forward, it was really kicking in to like two, almost three dB of gain reduction, which I don't really want. So I'm just kicking that threshold up a little bit, which is going to let that last tail end push harder uh, and keep the dynamic down a little bit earlier than the two and so it has that that slope to grow as it as it goes on until the fade starts so that's pretty much it uh i'm gonna let this one fly for the moment and uh see what i get back for revisions and uh i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found something interesting educational or uh uh otherwise thought-provoking Please let me know what you think and what kind of videos you'd like to see me do more of or uh, any points in here that you want more clarification on. Put it all in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe to my video series, share this with any of your friends that you think might enjoy it, and uh, give me a like and hit that notification bell. And until the next video, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.